Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vineet, and I'm here representing Comsol India. First of all, I'd like to thank ET Auto for giving us this opportunity to present here today. Frankly, this is my first virtual conference, and I'm quite excited to be here. I hope you are able to make the most of this event and find it enjoyable, because after all, virtual conferences are here to stay. COVID has in a way press the accelerator on the future and the future is here now which brings me to the topic of my presentation now it may look a bit pompous or bombastic even to you and in a sense it is intentional we at comsol have now been making simulation software for close to 25 years and along the way we have seen how software in this industry has matured and the use of such software has evolved. This is what I will be talking about today. So by the end of this presentation, I hope this title will be justified to you. Now, when we talk about the future of simulation, I'm sure many of you would have thought of the term democratization of simulation. This term has been bandied around for several years now, and rightly so. This is indeed where simulation software is heading. Simulation has long been the domain of a very few within large organizations, even though it is needed by the many. Why this has happened and what problems this causes is something we will discuss soon. However, it is certain that democratization is the need of the day today. Why? If we think of the workflow today, Every time the design or the process engineer has a problem which can be addressed using simulations, they go to the simulation team. And every time they want to see the effect of a change of a process parameter or a design parameter, they have to go back to the simulation team. This causes a huge bottleneck, which is why the need for democratization. What does this mean? Simply put, it means making simulations accessible to a larger audience who need these results to make decisions on the job. Now, while all of this may sound attractive, I'm sure we all appreciate that it's not easy. So what are the challenges in doing this? First, making software easier to use without compromising on the accuracy. This is because now, we would like people who have not been trained to use simulation software to start using it. This can be quite challenging with the current interfaces because they have been designed for people who have expertise in both the physics and the numerical techniques. Of course, if you want a large number of people using the software, you also need to ensure that the software you are using is affordable. So these are some of the challenges we need to talk about when we talk about making simulation software accessible to all. So before we look at where we are today and what the future is, let's take a look back at where it all began, way back in the 1950s. Some of the first physical applications of numerical methods began with the aerospace industry. This was closely followed by the nuclear industry. And while this provided great insights into physical behavior, which was earlier impossible, and most of this was largely structural mechanics, there were still several drawbacks. Some of these was that expertise was needed in the physics, the numerical methods, as well as in coding. Apart from this, there were also other questions such as which language to use, what hardware to use, what operating system to use, and so on and so forth. This paved the way for the next phase, which was the commercialization of software, which started way back in the 1960s, the mid to the late 1960s. Once again, this started with single physics software, and it now became much easier to set up models because now you started having customized user interfaces. So the need for coding was reduced. However, there were still several barriers. All the softwares back then 
were single physics softwares. Each had a different numerical technique, best suited for the physics it addressed based on the technology available back then. So as an example, structural mechanics softwares would have finite elements, flow softwares would have finite volumes as the numerical method, electromagnetic softwares would have uh, the method of moments, uh, or in some cases, the FDTD method. And so it was very difficult to couple different physics and solve for them simultaneously. So it became very difficult or practically impossible to collaborate and solve multi-physics so problems seamlessly. This led to the unification of software and the era of multi-physics simulations began in the early 2000s. Some of the benefits of multi-physics software was that it was much easier to collaborate since the user interface was common across physics now. As an example, here is the interface of our software, ComSol Multiphysics, where all the physics as well as the pre and post processing tools are available in a single graphical user interface. The user can modify different aspects of their models, the geometry, physics, mesh, all of this in a single graphical user interface and get high fidelity solutions without the need to ensure that the coupling is correct. This is the biggest advantage of a multi-physics software. It now becomes much easier to collaborate and the user does not need to worry about how the coupling is performed. However, some barriers still remain. As we had discussed earlier, one still needs to be an expert in both the physics and the software to get meaningful results. So based on the specifications which the simulation team receives, the modeler builds models based on these inputs and then sends it to the teams which need this information to take decisions on product or process design and operation. Based on the information they receive, they may change parameters to optimize their designs or processes. And to check if this actually works, they send this information back to the simulation team. And this, as we discussed a bit earlier, is what causes an iterative loop, which results in a bottleneck. So ideally, we would like the simulation team to create models, which can then be used independently by people who need these models without any further inputs from the simulation team. What does this mean? If the design or the manufacturing team wants to make some changes and test their models, they should be able to do this independently without further inputs from the simulation team or without compromising the accuracy of the original model. This is what we believe is true democratization of simulation. It is when simulation teams will create applications which can then be used independently of the simulation team itself without any further inputs from the creators of these models. This is the future. And as I said earlier, the future is here now because at ComSol, we have now introduced the application builder. Using the application builder, simulation experts can now create their own customized user interfaces based on their ComSol models and this customized interface can be created within the ComSol graphical user interfaces. These customized interfaces or applications can then be deployed without the need for a complete ComSol license. This is how it works. In the model creator, the model creator sets up the entire multiphysics model which includes all the complexity, the different physics which are coupled to each other, the relevant meshes and the solvers. This is done in the traditional user interface of the software, where every step of the model, right from design to physics, meshing can be parameterized. Then the model creator creates their own user interface within the user interface of the ComSol software. 
and we have tried to make this as easy as possible so you don't need to know scripting to start building your own user interfaces in our model builder on the top left corner as you can see now in the orange box you will see a button for the application builder all you need to do is click on this and it takes you to an interface which lets you build your own customized user interface once you click on that button this is what you see here in the application builder you can work on the look and feel of your interface add whatever input fields you want and whatever output you want your user to get you can also add multiple windows allow users to import or modify geometries basically the application can be as simple or as complex as the application designer wants it to be and in this way you can convert a comsol model into a comsol application the best part is that this application is no longer tied to a comsol license so it can run independently of any comsol license i'll get to that in a minute but before that here are some benefits of application the creator of the application can customize the app as per your requirements so that no simulation experience is required to run the application the application users enter the relevant inputs in and get the desired results even though the complete simulation is run in the background to ensure you get accurate results the application user does not need to worry about what is going on in the background here are a couple of examples of applications being used in the industry the first example is from a canadian user of comsol uh, and they are an automotive consultant they have created an app where their customers can choose different combinations of materials to minimize corrosion now corrosion is something that is not usually given much emphasis as far as simulation is concerned mainly because historically because of the physical complexity of the problem however tools today can solve complex corrosion problems and this application can be used by design engineers who may not have the in depth knowledge of electrochemistry all they need to input is the materials they want to choose the dimensions the geometric dimensions of these materials and the operating conditions and this app predicts the amount of corrosion for a given combination of their materials another example here is from a mahindra who have used applications to reduce iterations between the cae and the design teams designers are now empowered to do the first cut analysis and take decisions fast i've been quite brief about the studies here but i believe we have a booth here today so please feel free to visit our booth if you need any more details on these studies so this is what you can gain from applications now of course the only remaining question is how can these applications be deployed well it is possible to do large scale deployment of these apps since using the comsol compiler you can now create an executable out of this app no license is needed to run these applications because all of these applications can now become .exe files and can be run from anywhere in this world having said that you also have the option of running these apps over your own server so you can host these apps on a server using the comsol server and if you choose to do it this way you can also allow access of these apps through cell phones or through tablets so to summarize you can now build complex real life models using the multi physics features of comsol multi physics and in our graphical user interface you can couple across physics electromagnetics flow heat transfer structural mechanics and chemistry all of these can be seamlessly coupled in a single graphical user interface then while you are setting up these multi physics problems 
you can also optimize them with the optimization features we have and link them to the different CAD uh, softwares that you might be using. Once you've done this, you can also build your customized applications and deploy them as .exe files or using the COMSOL server, thus truly democratizing simulations. Simulation applications can be run by anyone, anywhere in the world. There are no restrictions on deployment. There's no need to purchase any additional licenses to run these applications. You can use your own branding, you can sell them or rent out your applications without any, the need to seek any permissions from Comsol. So you can literally create your own simulation software. This is what we believe is the future and the future is with you now. With that, I would like to thank all of you for attending today. We are here for the rest of the day. So please feel free to stop by our virtual booth and have a discussion with us. We'd love to have a discussion. And with that, I'm open to questions now. Thank you.